Good morning, everyone. I'm Tim, um, and it's just my privilege to be able to just share and continue on in this uniquely better uh, series. Thank you, Len, so much for setting up Hebrews and what it looks like again, like uh, Kev did last week as well, looking at what that book of Hebrews does. I love how Simon also unpacked his soap, uh, his devotion from that as well. And so I just want to just continue on a little bit. Simon looked last week at how when we trust God, we please him. Nice and simple, isn't it? When we trust in God, we actually please him. I don't know, anyone want the favor of God? Anyone? I do. Anyone else want the favor of God? Yeah, absolutely. I want God's favor. Not just for selfish ambition, but because he's God and I'm not, you know? He holds the keys to life and death. You know, he's the one that calls and accepts us into eternity. So I want his favor. You know, that's why we want his favor. You know, I want his mercy. Actually, we all need his mercy. I want his grace. We all need his grace. And I love that word, grace, how it's not just about the forgiving grace, but it's also about the empowering grace. And that's how I think we can be uniquely better. Is that not only that we, we come to God in that humble submission of going, Lord, here I am. I just humble myself before you. Lead me, guide me. But I need you, Jesus. I need you, Holy Spirit. Come fill me fresh today. Lead me, guide me. Even giving your dunamis power, your dynamite, your explosive power, your power to go, your power to share, your power to be the person who you made me to be. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to shrink back in life. For anyone who knows me, I get pretty passionate about life. I get pretty passionate about God and, and about my faith. And I get really passionate about seeing young people or anyone, but especially young people, come to a knowledge of who Christ is. I just want to encourage people everywhere I go. I just want to equip them with whatever it is that we can equip them with. And I want to empower them with opportunities. Opportunities of life. Opportunities to share. Opportunities to be who they're called to be. I got the power. Too much power. Cool. So anyway, to this morning, I just want to really quickly, and I mean super quickly, um, just in the next 20 minutes, just talk about uh, My Soap Devotions. And I want to bring it from the why and also the how. Okay, so I really want to look at the, the why and the how. And so in this next little 20 minutes, I'm just going to uh, just throw a few scriptures out there. This just sort of helped me. I'm going to bring a little personal um, story as well. That was part of my journey about why I, I sort of got involved um, in, in journaling and, and picking up a Bible for the first time. And then um, I'm uh, going to look at some uh, scripture from Hebrews as well because we're journeying. We have been journeying through Hebrews. So I want to bring a scripture from there, and then I just want to finish it off with a bit of a challenge for every single one of us. Is that cool? Okay, good. Okay, so here we go. Nice and quickly, we're going to move through this um, for the why. Let's have a look at the why. Well, I think every single one of us can understand that we all have different times in our life. We have different seasons in our lives. Sometimes they're fantastic. Sometimes they're great. And as Indy shared this morning, sometimes they're not so good. Every single one of us can relate to that, can't we? That, that we can have times in our life where it's not so good and it's like even sometimes, God, really? Come on. You know, or even, do I start doubting the existence of there being a God? Because how could this happen? And unfortunately, that's the, the world we live in. And we actually have a spiritual enemy is the deceiver, the father of all lies. He's the one who robs, steals, and destroys. And so as soon as we get a taste of who this Jesus is, he wants to come in and try and swoop it away from us. We all know the parable, the seed and the, the sower, you know, and he wants to try and take that from us. And so for, for the young guys or, or for every single one of us, we need to make sure that, that we stand on not just something, but on someone. We need to stand on a, on a foundation that sets us up for our lives. Because I don't know about you guys, but I get sick and tired of, of washing around sideways, sideways, this way, that way sometimes in life because life is high and life is low. Because someone says something or someone throws something at you and, and you start feeling, uh, I, I want to stand always on, on the truth, on who he is and on 
whose I am. And so with that, I remember um, back in the early days when I was first discovering with Michelle, my wife and our kids, about who this Jesus is. And we first started going to church and, and I was quite curious. And so in my curiosity, I wanted to check him out. I wanted to see, uh, are you real God? And and the, the first thing that, that caught my attention into, you know, when we first started to discover who this Jesus was for Michelle and I and for my family, the first thing that, that interrupted my thoughts on, on my, my presuppositions of life and what I thought of church. Now, for some of you who might remember, my, my church of growing up was uh, a very traditional let's just say, uh, a boring church where I wasn't engaged at all as a young boy that had a little bit of hyper tendencies to him. And so the, one of the ways that my father would, would get our attention would be just a little pull of the ear, like, oi, oi, and because I couldn't make noise in, in these uh, timber um, pews. And so, um, so I wasn't engaged in church, and so it wasn't until many years later that God started calling us. We started going to church, and we met community. We met what tasted like, what felt like an authentic community. The second thing that got my attention past that community was the worship and, and was this bands that were, were playing on stage. And I was like, whoa, that's not like I remember uh, someone on an organ going, how great is the Lord? And I thought, what is this? And so all of a sudden, that was the second thing that got my attention. But I can tell you the thing that got my attention the most was when God started changing my heart. When my heart was soft and all of a sudden it was like, oh man, that dude at the front, he's speaking to me. My heart is thumping. Something is racing inside of me. Anyone? Anyone? That, that's a living God, isn't it? You know, and, he, and he taps us on our heart and he's, he's like, i just got a little message for you. And we go, for me? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, for you, for you. And so that's when my eyes were opened. And once my eyes were opened and I questioned Mark, God, is that you? Well, then I had to find out who he was. I had to find out for myself. I, I, I couldn't just, you know, let it be this, this God of the Christians or this God of the people that sit in these pews or, or the God that, you know, we see on the TV or of the TV evangelists. I couldn't let it be just someone else's God. It had to be my God. So I wanted to find out what God can make me uniquely better to find out who you are. So I got my first Bible. I joined a, a connect group, a life group, and, and I started digging into it. Do you know if you want treasure, you've got to dig for it? Yeah? If you want treasure, you've got to dig for it. And so I started digging into the Word uh, in this, this, this connect group, this life group, and I started finding out what is life actually about through the lens of the one who created this life. And all of a sudden it was like, whoa, he's not just speaking to me in my, in my soul and in my heart, but he's also speaking through this word, this word of God. And so I love scriptures like, like in John where it says, the word of God became flesh to dwell here among us. And so I realized that this Jesus, these very words of this book, is actually like Jesus himself. And he wants to speak to every single one of us. Let's do this really quickly. I'm going to ask you this question. I want to give you guys 30 seconds just to turn to the person beside you and just discuss it really quickly, and then we'll get some responses. The Word of God, this Bible, the Word of God, what is it to you? What is the word of God to you? Why don't you turn to the person beside you and just answer that one. The word of God. Give you 30 seconds. Just 10 more seconds there, and we'll get some responses. Cool. Q. 
Cool. Okay, here we're going to go. Let's shout out some responses from you guys. The Word of God is the truth. It's grace, yes. A gateway, a lifeline, direction, encouragement, constant, an anchor. The Word of God is a foundation, promises, life. The, the Word of God is guidance, nourishing, truth, hope. The Word of God is. I love how the Word of God, word of God is, is like a sword, isn't it? It's like a double-edged sword, the Bible says, that divides between bone and marrow. Now, we're talking about thousands of years ago, you know, when, when uh, doctor surgeries probably weren't so precise. So divide bone and marrow would have been pretty precise back in those days. And so they said, between bone and marrow, soul and spirit. The Word of God is like that. The Word of God is living and active, is alive. And that's what we all just witnessed to before. We all said yes when we've, been, when we've heard from this God, this living God. It's living. It's alive. And it's working in every single one of us. I love how the Word of God rebukes us when we need rebuking. I love how the Word of God just gently nudges us back onto the path when we've gone offline. Where it just course corrects it, redirects us back on. Better than any Siri or Google Maps or whatever can do. It actually is the truth. So it tells you the true way. Not turn at the second exit and find yourself in a dead end or something. I don't know. The Word of God is alive and active. It corrects us. The Word became flesh. It speaks to our innermost thoughts. I love how the Word of God gives the needs to every single people. Every single one of us, don't we? And especially in young people, we see it so much more. But every single one of us has just the basic needs of, of acceptance and, and worth and value, love and a sense of belonging. And this speaks straight into that, doesn't it? It speaks straight into the hearts and the minds of who we are. No matter where we are, no matter what we're going through in life, we can pick it up and we can go, oh, thank you, God. Thank you for just course correcting me, for getting me back online again, getting me plugged back into that foundation of who you are. I love how Jesus is the redeemer, how Jesus is redeeming and reconciling all things and he's reconciling every single one of us back to him. Back to the Father. And you see that in Colossians 1, 19, 20, where it says that Jesus is reconciling all things to him. I love how there's so many examples in the Bible of people who have put their trust and their hope in God and how God has said to them, you follow this and it will go well with you. I love Joshua as he's taking over from Moses. He's just been wandering through the desert and God appoints him and says, I want you, Joshua, to lead my people. And he says, be what? Be strong and courageous. And then he says, meditate on my word day and night. And then you'll be successful in all you do. I want to be successful in all I do, not for my own glory, but for his glory. I want to run the race that's set before me because I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant, when I've finished my race. Huh? Anyone with me on that one? Yeah, yeah. I, I want Jesus to to say, Tim, come, come into my glory that I've been preparing for you. Here's a room, here's the place for all eternity that I have prepared for you. So, so many stories, so many people that we draw courage from. One thing I love about the, the what, how we do our devotions, and this is just the season we're in at the moment. We live down in, in Pottsville, so it takes us roughly about 40, 45 minutes to drive to work every morning. Um, and so we want to redeem that time as a family. So as my wife and I and the kids are driving in the car, we, we crack open the Word as a family. And, and we read what the devotion is for that day in the morning. And we discuss what is that devotion for that day in the morning. And then we, we talk about how does that apply to us. And then we pray out of that. And we pray for God to come fill us fresh and to help us to go in that day. 
And I love how Deuteronomy talks about that. In Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 22, it encapsulates all that, how we should be doing life in and with God's word, with his spirit leading us and guiding us. And in 19, Deuteronomy 11, 19, it says this, I love this, teach them to your children talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. I want to do life with God. I want to do life in God's Word. Can I tell you really quickly that when, when my kids were a bit younger, they got, they got sick of hearing their dad say, the Bible says... I would always reference the Bible says, you know, maybe not like that, I wouldn't say it, but I would always say, do you know the Bible says? And, and I'd, I'd reference what the Bible say. And so it became this joke after a while. I'd be like, hey, Dad, the Bible says, and then they would start quoting it, you know. And, and I, I want us to build as a family our foundation on the truth, on what the Bible says, on who this God is and whose I am in that. And so move along. Here we go. And doing our devotions at Hebrews. So going through de, um, Hebrews uh, the other weeks, one scripture I love in, in Hebrews that just ties in into this why is about our faith. And we know that Hebrews talks about faith so much and these, these men of faith. And Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, I love this, this piece of scripture. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud or crowd you could use there if you wanted to of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith I love sussing out different versions as well, and I love reading out of NLT as well as NIV. And, um, and I love how it talks about, you know, Jesus being the author, the one who wrote, and the pioneer, the author, and the perfecter, the one who wrote and then says, come on, I've got this great story for you, and I'm going to perfect you along the way if you put your trust in me, if you fix your eyes on me. I'm going to perfect you along the way. And since we're surrounded by such a great crowd or cloud of witnesses, to encourage, to spur on, to hear testimonies, to hear the word broken down, to hear real life, to be community together. That, that's what I want. That's what I, I want to be part of, this great crowd of witnesses because we can't do it by ourselves, can we? We can't do it by ourselves at all. We need each other. We're made for each other. Love God, love others. Love God, love others. We need to do it with each other. And Romans 12 too says, don't copy the patterns and the behaviours of this world, what we see what we see in our workplaces or in our schools or, or whatever it is, the things that we don't like, the things we know we shouldn't be part of. It says don't copy that, but be what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and how do we do that? Well, I love in 2 Peter, it talks about, in 2 Peter 1, it says we add to ourselves. This is a, a great scripture one of my old uh, senior pastors brought to my attention. And I thought that is God. That's one of those treasures that I've been waiting to dig up and to look at. And 2 Peter 1, 3 to 11, um, I won't go through it. I'll just go through it really quickly. Um, it says, add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge, knowledge self-control, self-control perseverance, perseverance godliness, godliness mutual affection, mutual affection love. For you possess these things in increasing measure increasing measure, then they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. We just took communion. We just heard that song. We've been walking with Christ. He cleanses us. He leads us. 
He guides us. He renews our mind day by day, moment by moment, word by word, action by action. So we add to ourselves. I love the disciples around Jesus as I, as I start finishing up here. The disciples around Jesus, and we, we see this beautiful picture in Acts, in Acts 4, how it talks about these disciples that were with Jesus. And, and I love all the, the people of the day that were, were seeing these people, and they were saying, they're just ordinary men. You know, they're ordinary men. They're, they're fishermen, and, and they're, they're a tax collector, and they're this, and they're that. You know, they're just ordinary men. And they were overwhelmed with what they saw, the boldness in these men, because they'd been filled with the Holy Spirit, that power to go, that dunamis power to go. And they saw this boldness of this ordinary men that had been with Jesus. I want to be someone that people look at me and say, hey, that, there's something about that person. I don't know what it is, but there's something about that person, and it's contagious. That's Jesus. That's Jesus, isn't it? It's Jesus inside of every single one of us through his Holy Spirit living, breathing, dwelling in us. When we say, God, I give you my heart, I give you my mind, I give you my, my soul and my strength, we're saying, God, you shape my heart. You soften it. You make it tender for where you want it to be. You lead my mind. You guide it. You transform it. I give it to you. You're the greatest surgeon. Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you all of who I am. So in wrapping up, from looking at that scripture of Hebrews and the few things I've learned from those few scriptures along the way, is that if we fix our eyes on Jesus, trusting him always, if we run our race, not someone else's, but we run our race that's set before us. And if we add to ourselves, we continually, in increasing measure, add to ourselves our serving and our loving of others. Well, then we receive the crown of life. We receive this eternal glory that God has waiting for every single one of us so that none shall perish. He calls us all. Great is our God. So I wonder where you are right now. I wonder what God's been speaking to you in your life recently. Maybe even just this morning. This God who we say, you know, stirs our heart. I wonder if he's speaking to you this morning. I wonder if there's a common thread that he's been talking to you about recently, about your life, about your actions. Maybe he's calling you to be uniquely better. Because I know this God calls us. He invites us into something better. And that better is a relationship with him. That better is so much more than we could ever imagine or dream of. It's that gold like we've never seen before. So I wonder what commitment you need to make to God right now. As we're about to sing, as you're about to go on your own way, do community together, do life, what commitment do you need to make day by day? Perhaps it's getting into the Word more. Perhaps it's allowing God to restore your heart, restore your mind, restore your attitude. Oh God, come. Come, Jesus. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Jesus, that you're in the business of transformation, that you're in the business of calling and inviting into eternal life you're in the business of redeeming and restoring bringing each one of us back into that person that you made us to be to live life and life to the fullest both here and now and for eternity to come so Jesus as we look to you 
and your word and your truth. Speak to us. Great is your name, Jesus. Great are you, Lord. All honour, all praise and all glory is yours, Jesus.